and Kate. I had her and I lost her. I'm still alive. I am Don't you leave me. Welcome back to Lost, the final season. We're taking a wild ride around the island <laughs> and gearing up for February 2nd, the beginning of the final season of the show that changed the rules. Hello! And we've got an impressive lineup of Lost fans and Lost experts here to answer a burning question. How has Lost become a worldwide obsession? But sometimes obsession begins with infatuation. I knew I was hooked when Matthew Fox was on that beach. Handsome man. Although I do think his shirt could be off a little more. You're on an island, for God's sakes. Shirtlessness helps. Yeah. Always go without shirts. My favorite moment of the show was when this beautiful woman, Kate, comes on the screen. You're checking me out? I think Kate was an instant fan favorite because she had this really fresh-faced girl-next-door appeal. But then, as you start to find out more about her, she becomes so much more interesting. Hottest character on Lost. I'm gonna say I'm biased because I got to kiss her. Hey. Evangeline Lilly. <laughs> and then right after that, that Sawyer guy. Oh, There are some pretty people in that show. Thanks. I'm obsessed with it for the relationships. Is Kate gonna end up with Sawyer or Jack and are Jin and Son gonna be reunited? I think a lot of women are probably very invested in Sawyer and who he is romantically involved with. That's so. I will tell you, I do have an affinity for Ben. His ability to manipulate people how does that work? I guess I'll have to show you. The show has been great at creating characters that really have that kind of love-hate dichotomy. I think you want people to hate you. All you need is one episode focused on that character, and suddenly, they're your favorite. What if everything that happened here happened for a reason? The character that means the most to me is John Locke, because I really resonate with the themes of faith in this show. Why do you find it so hard to believe? Why do you find it so easy? Why are we here? What is our purpose? Do we have destiny? That was getting a little too deep even for me. That was super yeah. deep. You know who would fit in really well on Wisteria Lane is Locke. Jack thinks I'm crazy, doesn't he? He would be that creepy neighbor that you're like, who's the weird guy with the knife? <laughs> why do I know that name? Like John Locke. It's like, why do I know that? Well, he's a philosopher, you know, from the 1700s. But Locke is not the only notable name. Lost has tapped into the world of science, literature, and the humanities to do some pretty impressive name dropping. Well, what are they thinking, the writers? Who else knows this information? I mean, I'm just, I'm nuts for it. And Lost Castaways seem to be nuts for books. Reading Watership Down. The Wizard of Oz. It's out of the script. The Looking Glass. It's Lord of the Flies time now. In fact, the many layers of Lost have inspired a whole new world beyond the broadcast. Lost is a really great serialized mystery that basically begs you to think about it even after the episode is over. One university brought Lost from the dorm room to the classroom. We taught a college course on Lost at Tufts University. I think it filled up in 20 minutes when registration opened. We ended up with a great group of students who were all fans of the show, kind of all across the spectrum. I ended up on NPR uh, with the producers, and they volunteered to do a conference call with the students, and it was by far the highlight of the semester. While in the virtual halls of Lost University, fans from all over the world get schooled in Lost mythology. Here's just a sample of the exciting new courses available. Lost is really the first show that I can't imagine watching without the internet. We went from a water cooler culture to an electronic water cooler culture. There were all these like other layers to the show that could be explored. Instantly, you can go online and say, okay, I have no idea what Faraday is talking about. Someone explain it to me, and someone will. Think of the island like a record spinning on a turntable. Only now, that record is skipping. You can read people's theories, you can read people's interpretations of various books and writings. It's immense. Lost really rewards its die-hard fans. It's expanded it beyond just an hour of television. Well, man, that was like a Jedi moment. Lost has pretty much made it cool to be a geek over a television show. There's a lot of us out there who, who are like that, who want to geek out on mythology. Lost fans are crazy. 
and I mean that in like the best possible way. The show definitely did make it okay to let your nerd flag fly. And nowhere did these flags fly higher than at Comic-Con. Going to Comic-Con and watching all of those lost bands stand in line overnight for a chance to sort of hang out with Damon and Carlton for an hour in the morning. You could just feel it, it was like bursting at the seams. Totally insane. I was so happy to be there and to be a part of it just because it was so cool. One lost super fan duo has found a unique and literal way to sing the show's praises. It's more than just a television show. It's it's a way of life. We didn't choose this, it chose us. Found a hatch with food and guns and beer. Very early on in an interview, Michael Emerson confessed his awareness of us and said he liked the music, which was sort of like John Lennon saying he likes your music. It's almost the exact same thing. From catchy melodies to the hippest galleries, the show has inspired fans to create their own lost art forms. We thought it was gonna be a few people strolling around looking at posters. We were not prepared for what's actually going on here. At Gallery 1988 in LA, fans camped out all night for a peek at lost inspired masterpieces. To look around at the gallery itself and to see the art that the show has inspired, it's just a small uh, window into what the future and the legacy of Lost might be. There's the art and then there's the science of Lost. I love the show so much that I wanted to be able to cover it in any way that we possibly could. Decided that we were gonna start fact checking my by firing a bullet at it. Turns out. Can. Surprisingly, a lot of it is based on real science. The castaways have survived electromagnetism, vanishing islands, and some pretty crazy time travel. Which I feel like maybe we helped make a little bit clearer, but just a little. No writers are bigger lost fanatics than the hosts of EW.com's Totally Lost, Jeff Jensen and Dan Sneerson. Totally Lost is a show every week that Jeff and I do. We unpack the previous week and goof around tremendously. Will you please pass the Dharma peanut butter? Look, it's a collector's item. We're never opening it, okay? <laughs> People are just like, you need help. Yeah. And we're getting it. Let me help you. No way, dude. Help is exactly what Lost Untangled provides fans, recapping every episode with dolls. Hey, is that a smoke monster? <laughs> the overwhelming response to Lost around the world gives me faith that there are other freaks like me out there wishing that they could be on an island in a hatch, pushing a button. That is my dream. I used to have dreams. When we return, we'll flash back in time to see our starry-eyed actors before Lost was launched. Plus, superfans plan for February 2nd, when the much-anticipated final season begins. But first, here's another installment of Jimmy Kimmel's Secrets of Lost. The final scene of the final episode of Lost is under lock and key. We are incredibly protective of it. Only one of us actually knows how it all ends. Call Jay. What? What? what?